there are many of you in this audience who have a definition of where you want to go. You know automatically where you're going, what you're going to do in life. And then there are some of us, and you know who you are in this audience, who prefer to float your boat and go with the current and move where it takes you until you hit some rapids. This is a story of that kind of journey, an uncharted journey, and making your way with that. I grew up in rural Louisiana, and floating my boat was, uh, came pretty naturally. I was the daughter of an artist, and I grew up looking at art shows and making art and going to art school seemed like the natural course for me. The obvious thing for people to do when they go to art school is to teach art when they graduate. Not the only thing, but one of the easier things to do. I taught art, and after 16 years of being in schools, realized that being back in school wasn't the best thing to be doing. So I left. I went and became a gallery, uh, a gallery person, and I learned how little artists make when they sell their art in galleries. <laughs> I decided that I wanted to support the arts, but I also wanted to make a living and wear nice clothes. <laughs> I got a degree and ended up working in the field of public art, and I had an argument that seemed natural. Uh, public art was something that had been done since the beginning of time. People engaged in civic dialogue and made art to talk about their world. I became a culture warrior in the percent for art field and made art like this. Um, I didn't make it, I commissioned it, and it wasn't always popular at first. I made art in many different places, in many different locations, including Vancouver and False Creek, like this work by Buster Simpson, a giant art-making tool that measured tides, as well as um, measuring temperature in the water. It was called Brush with Illumination. I also created work in, Vancouver, uh, in San Francisco, by this time, I was beginning to understand my strength in connecting people around dialogues about what uh, was beautiful and what we wanted, what kind of public spaces we wanted to live in. Ultimately, I was designing in the public realm and thinking about the way we want to live in the future. What kind of places do we want to be? This is a boundary marker in the uh, city of Phoenix in Scottsdale. And it made me realize that my strength was about civic dialogue and about making places beautiful, places where we wanted to dance versus places that were value engineered and bland. So after several years of doing this, I began to think about where I wanted to go here. I was successful. I'd made several uh, public art projects. And then Katrina hit. Um, my family was devastated, uh, and I was devastated. Even though I lived in San Francisco, the land of earthquakes, the idea of being displaced and losing your home and losing everything you knew um, made me rethink my own life. Ultimately, I ended up in San Fran uh, Santa Barbara quite accidentally. And when everything was new, I returned to what was familiar, and that was the arts. I began working again in the arts in a very different place, um, but at the same time wondering why I should be there. Something strange happened, and I wasn't working in the arts. Voltaire said that we need to cultivate our own gardens, and I found myself through some smooth talking in the Santa Barbara Botanic Garden raising money for them. The question about raising money for plants was, what was my case for support? Um, I, for the first time, didn't have a voice. I didn't know how to advocate for plants. Um, and then when faced with a sick child and a sick plant, who are you going to support? 
But I learned a great deal about California and its plants. Um, I learned about the rarity of our unique biodiversity and the fact that it was disappearing. In fact, California is like the fucking Amazon in terms of biodiversity. Um, and it's, we're losing it. Native plants are cool. Um, they are very, very helpful. And they are beautiful. In fact, they are the ultimate placemakers in the natural world, unless, of course, you shop at Home Depot and buy other kinds of plants. But the bottom line is, why should you care? Why should I care about native plants? I knew why I liked public art, and I knew why I supported artists, but I wasn't quite sure I knew why I liked plants until I met the people who cared for them. Um, they are people like you. Uh, they are landscaped architects. They are gardeners. And they have a common position in terms of thinking about the natural world and where we live in it. Even Andy Warhol could appreciate the role of nature and art and valued it. And what I would like you to leave with today is thinking about your own role, role with native plants in your environment and what they mean to you. The bottom line, it's about people, but your relationship to plants is one of the very beginning and the ultimate relationship of where we began. So come to the Botanic Garden and reconnect with plants, especially native plants. Thank you.